So now we want to take a look at the Herodian dynasty and the New Testament, because this dynasty is in the backdrop of the Gospels, and it's really important to see if we can understand who are some of the key players and the role that they have in the Gospels. So, of course, this chart comes from Mark uh, Strauss's Four Portraits book, and we had already talked about a number of these individuals previously, specifically these three, Herod Antipas, Archelaus, and Herod Philip. These, of course, were the sons of Herod who received portions of his kingdom that was divided up by Caesar Augustus after he died. Of course, these three appealed to Caesar Augustus, and, and so after Herod's kingdom was divided, this is what it looked like. So Philip, uh, his son Philip, received the northeastern region, Herod Antipas received Galilee, and Archelaus, of course, received Judea, Samaria, and Idumea. So we've talked a lot about Archelaus and kind of what happened there. I think we understand him, but we, I want to take a look at some of the other ones because they play an important role in the New Testament as well. So as we look at the Herodian dynasty, let's look at, at, at this gentleman, Herod Philip. Okay, so he, of course, ruled, um, he became the tetrarch of, of the northeastern region up there in Galilee uh, on the map that I just showed you right there. So Herod died without an heir. So what happened is his territory became part of Syria, Herod Philip, that is. And he's only mentioned once in the New Testament. So Luke 3, 1 kind of talks about this division and what happened, where Luke says this, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate became the governor of Judea. Herod, that is Herod Antipas, we'll know in a, in a little bit, being the tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea, Tracontus and Lysanias. I'm probably butchering these names. Um, but anyways, you can see them here on the map. All of these regions were that northeastern region that Luke mentions here in Luke 3.1. And of course, this is a map we had looked at previously, but some of those regions that I just badly mispronounced are up there in that northeastern region. And this, of course, was the region that Herod, the, uh, Herod Philip, the son of, of Herod the Great, received uh, after the division of his father. Uh, went to him, that section right there that Luke mentions in Luke 3, 1, okay? So that area, of course, that's the Philip who received that section as well. So if we go back and we want to look at, we look at him, we want to shift and look at the other, the other Herod that really plays an important role, and that is Herod Antipas. He's, a, he's very important because he becomes, the, he becomes the tetrarch or the overseer of Galilee and Perea from 4 BC to, to 39 AD. And this is important. He rules for 43 years, which if we go back to the biblical timeline that we had looked at previously, he actually rules longer than Herod the Great, his father. So Herod the Great, I think, had, had a greater impact, did much more significant building, but Herod Antipas actually ruled longer than his father, Herod the Great, and he was, of course, the ruler of the Galilean region. So what's important to know about Herod Antipas, though, in, in contrast to Herod the Great, his father, Herod the Great was the Herod of Jesus' birth. But Herod Antipas was the Herod of Jesus' public ministry. So that is an important distinction to keep in mind as we go through the Gospels, understanding, because the word Herod gets used for a lot of people, understanding who was when is going to be important. So let's talk about Herod Antipas, because he's important. He shows up in the Gospels a lot. So he was the one who imprisoned and executed John the Baptist after John rebuked him for marrying his brother Philip's ex-wife. So Luke and Mark both mention this account when it comes to John the Baptist. So let's, let's see what, uh, make, make sure we understand what we're talking about here. So we have Herod Antipas. Now, if you look in that middle first generation line, you see that there are actually two people who have the name Herod Philip. We've already talked about one, the one who received that northeastern region. That's actually not who we're talking about in this section of the ver in, in the in the Gospels, which can be confusing because it's the same name. But it's actually this brother, also named Herod Philip. He is the one who was married to this woman named Herodias. But what happened was, and I don't know the, the circumstances there, but Herodias ends up leaving this Herod Philip and marrying Herod Antipas. Maybe it was because he got... He became the ruler of that region. I don't know. I'm sure somebody does, but I don't know. What happens, though, is that she basically leaves him for his brother, Herod Antipas. And so John the Baptist calls Herod Antipas out, and that is the backdrop here of Luke 3, where it says, So uh, with many other exhortations, this is John the Baptist now, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Mark, 
also mentions this account and gives us even more details. Mark 6 says, For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. So when he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. That is, when Herod heard John, he didn't always understand everything that he said, but he highly respected and protected him, which of course makes it a big-time conflict of interest for Herod Antipas because this woman that he is now married hates him and hates that he has called out the adultery between Herod Antipas and Herodias. And of course, this is the backdrop of the scene that we see, at, which is at Herod's birthday, where his, Herodias's daughter, Salome, which she's dancing at, at, his, at his behest and, and probably in an erotic way. And Herod basically says, what do you want for your birthday? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. And she says, I don't know, what should I ask for? And of course, she says, give me John the Baptist's head on a platter, which of course must have been at the behest of of his mother, because she didn't, she wasn't ready for that moment, but that is how John gets executed, was because Herodias had a grudge and she was bitter towards him for calling out her sin with this Herod, Herod Antipas. Uh, Jesus also calls Herod Antipas that fox in Luke 13, where it says, at that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Jesus did, go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out demons, I perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I will finish my course. Herod Antipas is mentioned a couple other times that are important as well. One was that he wondered about Jesus' identity when John speculated that he had been risen from the dead. So, so in Mark 6, it says, King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. And some were saying that John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. Now imagine how much dread that would put in Herod Antipas' heart, because he was responsible for killing him. So that is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. So, so Herod Antipas was very interested in Jesus if he truly was what the rumor was saying, that it was actually the resurrected John the Baptist. But I think most importantly was that Herod Antipas actually wanted to meet Jesus. He had been hearing these things about him, wanted to meet him in person. And during the time when, when Jerusalem was celebrating Passover, during the year that Jesus was there and was ultimately executed, Herod was in Jerusalem. And he and he, Herod was in Jerusalem. And so it says in Luke 23, it says, When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. Heard this meaning Jesus' claim to being the, the, the Son of God. He, he, he says, basically, where are you from? And when he learned, this is Pilate now, when he learned that, that Jesus belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, that's Herod Antipas, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. And so, of course, what happens is he goes before him. He, Herod, all Herod wants to see is Jesus do a miracle. Jesus refuses. And, of course, they send him back to Pontius Pilate, which we'll cover later in the course. But that's who this one is, this Herod Antipas. Very important for our understanding of the background of the New Testament, especially with the Herodian dynasty. All right, there's a couple other ones I want to I wrap up just by, by talking about. The first one is this, this one, Herod Agrippa I. We read about him in the book of Acts, specifically Acts 12, uh, verses 1 through 24. So this is, of course, the son of Aristobulus, the grandson of Herod the Great. This is the Herod that executes John's brother James, uh, and he arrests Peter in Acts 12. This is Herod Agrippa I. Okay, This is not Herod Antipas anymore. This is a generation past. And of course, his, his death was recorded as a judgment from God by Luke, and even Josephus mentions the same thing. Luke says in Acts 12, 23, immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. One of the most interesting verses in the New Testament. But this is Herod Agrippa I. So again, they're all called Herod, so this chart is helpful in helping us distinguish who's being talked about. But that's the one mentioned in Acts chapter 12. There's also Herod Agrippa II. So we're now one more generation down uh, that we read about near the end of Acts, Acts 25 and 26. And this is Herod Agrippa II was the one who was invited to hear Paul's defense during his imprisonment at Caesarea. So we read about this a little bit in Acts 25 where it says, Now when some days had passed, 
Agrippa the king and Bernice arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus, who we mentioned earlier. And as they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king. So that's, of course, where Paul makes his defense about uh, being an apostle, about, the, about Christ res- uh, raising from the dead and all of that. So that is the, the Herod Agrippa II. And there's some other people that are mentioned down there as well. But hopefully that gives us at least a little bit of an understanding of who the major players are within the Herodian dynasty during the backdrop of the New Testament. So let's pause there on the Herodian dynasty. And so now what we want to do is shift on to understanding what were some of the key events that happened during and after the Gospels. 